So example number two says, make a force diagram of a kid jumping on a trampoline. According to the SID method, the first thing we need to do is sketch the object. It does not have to be a masterpiece, but I'm going to just draw what looks like a trampoline and a person on it. So this problem is probably the hardest out of all of them only because just like we saw with um, the ball bouncing in one of our demonstration labs is that it really depends on the snapshot in time that you are focusing on. So if the student or the kid is on his way down on the trampoline that force diagram is going to look something different than if the child were on its way up. So I'm going to pretend like the child already um, hit the trampoline and is now at the point where he is pushing and going back up um, back up in the air. So we have sketched the object, we can cross that off. The next thing we need to do is um, identify the forces and in this case um, there are quite a few forces. We should always know that gravity is acting always so that is a no-brainer and that could be the first one unless you're on the moon or something that could be the first one on your paper um, many of you were confused between support and elastic um, as soon as something is stretchy or bouncy that makes it an elastic force so um, while it acts kind of like a support force in this case the trampoline is helping the student uh, or child bounce back up so that is going to be an elastic force. Uh, many of you included the fact that there's human force because um, often when you are on a trampoline you kind of use your legs to push back up so I would agree with human force. And technically you're moving through the air so in that case we can also um, add air resistance. So the next thing we need to do is um, identify the forces on our picture. So something that I saw was um, you did all the work on the side of your paper, but you didn't actually add the forces and the, the arrows to your picture. This is going to end up being your force diagram. All of this is just to help you organize those thoughts and keep you on track. So when it comes to the test you're not going to see all that you're just going to have a blank piece of you know paper and you're going to say okay go make a force diagram um, and you need to make sure you know what to do so when we say identifying the forces that means on the picture so I need to take my thoughts over here and put it onto the picture so I'm going to go ahead and put elastic force human force and air resistance. Okay, now I have identified the forces. I can check that off. And the next thing, or the last thing we need to do, is the drawing the arrows. And that's the trickiest part because we need to make sure that they're the correct direction and the correct size. Looking at the direction, we know that gravity is always going downward. When it comes to elastic, you want to think about which way that force is helping the object go. In this case, the object is the kid. An elastic force is helping the kid bounce back up. So we're going to go ahead and say up. Human force, again, the kid is helping himself go back up by using his legs. So we're going to say up. An air resistance is a counter force. So just like when you have your hand out the car window uh, and you feel the air pushing against your hand, it's always going to go against the object. So that's why it's really important to know, is this person on their way down or on their way up? If they're on their way up, then air resistance is going to push against that uh, and go down. When it comes to the sides of these forces, you need to think about whether or not these forces are balanced or unbalanced. So we have two forces that are going down and we have two forces that are going up. It does not matter if yours are in a different order, so don't worry about that. 
But we know that gravity and air resistance are pushing down or pulling down. And we know that elastic and human are going up. Since this person is moving, it's um, and we can assume at a non-constant speed, then we know that this uh, these forces are unbalanced. So they are going to be different sizes. So the other thing we need to think about is, is this person going up or down? And we've said many times that this person we're going to focus on going up. So we know that elastic... and human, which are the forces that are going up, need to be bigger than gravity and air resistance. Um, so again, the, these two together need to be bigger than uh, gravity and air resistance. So, when I go to my picture, I'm going to make um, air resistance and gravity smaller. Gravity can kind of always make like a medium type thing. Air resistance we're going to make pretty tiny. I need to kind of imagine if these two were together, I need to make the sum of these two bigger. So, I'm going to um, exaggerate that by making a long arrow for human and I'm also going to have a long arrow for elastic force so clearly okay, these two uh, upward forces are a lot longer than these two little downward forces and that tells us that the um, overall motion of this object, this person is going to go up in the air.